to uh, <coughs> to make it uh, from the uh, research of literature. So we made some uh, graphs of ancient strategy and uh, uh, tried to understand what were what were all in the network the slave uh, has. Yeah, for, for this research we took six ancient, ancient Greek strategies by three authors. There are Euripides, Eschiel and Sparkle. Uh, and uh, we made networks for the, the six strategies uh, search, searching for kind of special position of slaves in a network of the tragedy? You know uh, that uh, the position of slave in the society of ancient Greek, Greece was uh, not, uh, not really like a, uh, a citizen and, or a human. As uh, Aristotle says, uh, we have a, a quote there, uh, but uh, whole politica and uh, some parts of ethics uh, they consist of uh, that uh, women and slaves are not like uh, real humans, uh, human beings. They are like half humans or like that. So, uh, uh, if uh, the slave is not a human, and uh, ancient Greek uh, author like Euripides or Sophocles uh, knows that. Uh, he maybe he would uh, uh, point him in some different place in his uh, uh, network, and we'll see. And uh, that was what we were finding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As for the methodology, we mm, so we made a network for each of the six tragedies, and we counted for a link a speech act, uh, a monologue or a dialogue, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the weight of the each link was determined by uh, the appearance of uh, the, uh, the characters who speak in different acts of the tragedy. Yes, for example, if uh, you know, Antigone and this man, they talk to each other in one act, the weight of their link will be one, if in two acts, uh, it will be two. So, uh, in uh, Justin, uh, the ancient ancient tragedies are very classical in this form. So we also have uh, this structure like acts, and uh, then the chorus uh, sing, and then another act. So that was not very hard. So let's begin. Let's start. The first uh, first network which we would observe is uh, is Hill's Agamemnon. Uh, not uh, not much uh, characters. Uh, the the central central and main character is Clytemnestra, and uh, that is uh, that is also interesting about women. In this strategy. Maybe we'll we'll say about in uh, in summary. And we have here two slaves. Uh, the first one is a female slave of uh, slaves of Clytemnestra. They are uh, up there. And uh, the little dot, uh, little little dot, which is not connected with anything. You see, uh, every character is connected uh, uh, with each other. Yes, uh, messenger is connected with Haragus, uh, Agamemnon with Clytemnestra. However, that slave guard uh, is not connected to anybody, and also female slaves. Uh, so we can say uh, only only. Uh, by this network, that uh, slaves are somehow separated from uh, from the basic network, the main network. They are firstly they are like secondary characters. No, of course they are not the main. However, they are unlike secondary characters because uh, they don't don't speak. Uh, as you see, Agamemnon is a classical secondary character. Uh, he is linked with Clytemnestra, with uh, uh, like this, this both edge arrow. So he talks somebody, to, uh, says somebody to Clytemnestra, and she answers. However, uh, then she, um, 
then she orders something to her female slaves, they don't answer. So they only uh, do what that uh, she said. And also, that is important, that was uh, the, only, the only case uh, here, that uh, one, uh, one character is separated and it is a slave. Uh, in, in any other uh, drama which we observed, there were not such a hero who, who was totally not linked with uh, Remain at Home. Uh, yes, let me go there. In, in the next case is uh, another very important Greek tragedy, Antigone by Sophocles. And here we can observe uh, uh, the figure of the slaves out there. Yeah, they are connected to Creon, who is uh, the main character according to the network. It's not Antigone, as it may seem when we uh, read uh, the tragedy by close reading. <laughs> And in the, in the network, we can see that, uh, in fact, uh, Creon is the lead character here. And the slaves are, are connected only to him, and uh, they don't speak to. It's uh, very import important for uh, the general strategy of the appearance of the slaves in the tragedy. So we, we have another classic word, and here the slaves don't speak too. Uh, and uh, the case is the same like in Agamemnon, because uh, the only appearance of the slaves uh, is when Creon orders something to them. And also they don't answer. Yeah. And uh, the very important point is that uh, we have uh, three characters who have only one link uh, to a character, character of the plot. Mm. There are mm, slaves, uh, mm, Teresas and Haman. But uh, what distinguishes the slaves from the other two is that uh, the slaves mm, don't, don't speak, they don't have speech acts, and uh, Teresa and uh, Hammond uh, have not many, but some speech acts, and their appearance in the plot is important for the plot. So, mm. unlike the slaves. Uh, the next, uh, next point will be very interesting, because here they made the uh, uh, something like clusterization. We we also made in you know previous times. However, that really uh, made no sense because of uh, you see very close structure which is very um, very pointed you no know, very forced on uh, one main hero. Uh, so here uh, that was the only case when something just clustered and slaves were. Uh, were the things, or I know, were humans who clustered. Uh, there, there is a, like dialogue uh, in uh, in the first part of the tragedy. It's like a chronological part or something like that. So it's just not the first act. And uh, there, are two slaves are just chatting with each other, and uh, nurse she just didn't appear uh, in the rest of the tragedy and slave attendant appear once. Uh, so we see that there are only characters, uh, the slave nurse is the only character who is not connected with Medea. And uh, if you will observe this, uh, this graph, or either this, uh, you'll see that uh, it is very important uh, in ancient Greek tragedy to be connected to the main hero. Because everybody here, uh, except uh, the guard and the messenger. However, the messenger is connected with, uh, um, with the leader of the four. Uh, Horagus, uh, it's like the, the main singing uh, man, uh, because ancient strategies... All, all, all women, as we can yes, see further. <laughs> uh, because uh, uh, ancient strategies are like uh, uh, 
a dialogue between uh, characters and uh, the chorus. So the leader of the horror is very important, and uh, here the nurse is not connected with me. The central central character that's also important. Uh, you see that they are chatting with each other with uh, both age uh, arrow, and the uh, slave attendant is chatting with me. There, uh, that's that was the first case when we then the slave was talking something to the main character. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After the three classic works, we took another three works by the same authors, and uh, here we have uh, Arrested by Eripid. Uh, and what we can observe here, but we, mm, yeah. we, we, we have here a bit an interesting case, but in the general structure, the color of the network is very light, so it's, it's hard to see some important points. It's our fault, but mm, it's easier to see it here. We have the two slave figures here, two slave characters. Uh, one character are the typical slaves <laughs> because um, they are only connected to only one character in the plot and uh, the only appearance uh, uh, of the slaves here is when uh, they have an order but uh, the more interesting mm, they don't answer again yeah. Mm, but um, what is really interesting here is uh, uh, the other slave uh, character because he's not a typical slave uh, it's the Phrygian eunuch he, uh, who, who appears here and uh, he's a legitimate character because it's even named somehow so we don't have a uh, word slave here, we just uh, have written it here to make the structure simpler. But mm, in the play, he, uh, he's named as the Phrygian name, and uh, he has uh, <coughs> mm, two speech hmm? two speech and acts. Yeah, two, mm, he has two, two, two acts of speech, and mm, Despite being a slave, uh, he talks to uh, two important characters of the plot. Not, not, not to one, but... Yes, as you, as you could mention, our first, uh, first three tragedies were like, more classical in the, the network or shape. And uh, uh, so, so we put like them, so that... Uh, in the first part of the presentation, we we discuss like the main features about slaves. And now some some extra extra points or uh, interesting things. Uh, now uh, I think that is the third was more the most interesting. Uh, Hoya Feroy by S. Hills. Uh, here uh, here we have we have a female slave chorus. So they are like Quaferoi uh, is like they uh, the slaves who cry with the uh, widow. So when uh, the husband dies, the widow take take her slaves for crying, and they go somewhere in Quaferoi. Uh, so what that's is? like uh, some ritualistic practice. And uh, uh, so here we have uh, a female slave uh, horror and. Uh, it is over there in the left uh, corner, left high corner. Uh, they talk to Electra, obviously, because uh, she is the one who is. Uh, oh, okay, we have also um, the the slave character who is in the uh, who is one of the three main uh, main points in our network, and uh, that is interesting, I guess. Uh, however, there is some problem because um, uh, they only are mentioned as slaves only in beginning 
like in uh, preface, uh, it is said that uh, uh, the, the woman is going with her slaves and uh, that is all. And uh, they are uh, like, the whore is playing the slaves. And afterwards, uh, they don't, uh, the author don't mention it again. So uh, maybe uh, uh, in the rest of Acts, uh, the horror isn't uh, 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 the horrors are not the slaves, uh, just uh, just this, uh, the woman of the uh, of the city. Uh, so uh, it is not a, a classical case, and we really uh, have uh, uh, could not uh, anal uh, make a strict analysis here. However, uh, the central point of the female slave is interesting. And our last case. Yeah. Our last case for today is uh, Oedipus the King by Stockholm. And uh, it's interesting for us because uh, we have uh, uh, four slave characters here. We have two servants, we have a guard, and we have a slave. Um, the most important uh, here is that uh, all uh, those uh, slave characters are in the same position, but uh, the only difference is uh, between the uh, uh, is in the quantity of uh, speech acts. So. Uh, Mm, their functions in the play are different because uh, the slave, <laughs> the typical slave, <laughs> has has an order, and our other three, servant one, servant two, and the guard, uh, they in, intercommunicate uh, with uh, the main characters, and they have uh, their own speech acts, but uh, they have their speech acts only because uh, <laughs> their appearance in the what is, impor is uh, important for uh, the for further the development of this plot. <laughs> mm. uh, and uh, mm. in, in, in another trait here is that uh, mm, uh, three, three of them mm, uh, ha uh, don't have names, but uh, they are not called the slaves, so they are not servants, guards, but not the slaves. And uh, this naming kind of legitimates their uh, speaking in the play. The summary. Our hypothesis, as you remember, was that uh, slaves uh, would be uh, understood uh, in ancient strategy like uh, things, like tables or some something which can just speak, so it would have a diverse position in the network of the plot, uh, unlike the other characters who are not slaves. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we understood that the slave in a tragedy ha has really some features, but uh, it is not. Uh, uh, we couldn't. We can. We can't say. Uh, uh, I know, like a hundred percent that we really found something uh, correct. That uh, mm, something really true. That the uh, the slave is really a thing. We the, the network doesn't show uh, that to us. Um, the network shows us that uh, the slaves have a special position in the network and in the plot, uh, and this position is really different from the position of other characters in, in, in the tragedy, lead characters or secondary characters. The slave have a lesser role than um, in the secondary characters. Uh, they don't speak, they don't they have don't a name, uh, and usually are in insignificant parts of the, of the plot. Uh, they are not connected to, uh, to the secondary characters, they are only connected to main characters, 
in the best case, so they could, could be connected to nothing. And uh, also, they are also far, uh, always far from the network center. That is all. That was great work. You had an actual research question, you found yourself some data, and then you used network analysis to answer the question. That was really great. I have a ton of questions, but maybe you should go first. Anyone? Well, I do, of course, but go ahead, go ahead. students first. Кто ничего не хочет спросить? Можете по-русски, если вам стрёмно, по-английски. И французский. That's it. Could you please go through all the networks? Yes. It is not our best network, uh, the last one is edit clicking, so I don't want it to be, uh, to be on the screen, I want uh, the, the view to work. So maybe you could uh, tell us how you obtained the data, I mean, did you do some close reading? Because you said some of the slaves don't even talk, so how did you get them into the network? Uh, well, uh, we actually uh, did some close, we actually did scalable reading. Because firstly, we found uh, txt files on internet of those uh, those dramas, and we just uh, we just with control F found the word slave in the slave or servant or like that, and then we tried to uh, to uh, to analyze all the uh, uh, all the cases, and then I had uh, a book of those uh, those dramas. We just uh, really read it to make our CSV files to, uh, that was not like uh, mm, I know much time because uh, dramas are not very big <laughs> <laughs> well, I like that you call it scalable reading which is what it is so <laughs> it's a good approach of course yeah. I'm actually interested in how you, how did you come up with the original idea to, I mean, what made you think that it would be interesting to study positions of slaves? I mean, was it like, you, you, were you just sitting and, you know, out of nowhere or were we inspired by something? I think we were inspired by two things. Uh, we were, firstly, we were inspired by this statement of Aristotle, uh -huh. uh, who, mm, <laughs> said in the politics that uh, the community can be formed only of uh, men and women and slaves uh, Aristotle, should be inspiring research <laughs> since <laughs> should be excluded <laughs> and uh, the second point uh, that, that is inspired us I think it was uh, actor network theory or uh, some objective oriented anthology or something like that mm, when we count uh, Things as the actors of the uh, as the uh, uh, as the participants in the plot, and we we can uh, attribute some human functions to non-human objects. And this is sort of the reverse. <laughs> yeah, and we uh, mm, we we wanted to come. Mm, compare the position of a slave uh, and how it is uh, disting uh, distinguished to a man and to a thing. <laughs> so it was kind of intermediate position. <laughs> cool, cool, nice. Uh, because actually, I mean, w when we started studying Russian drama, I mean, there were no slaves, obviously, but there were servants, of course. And it also, you know, you, you start seeing how servants, you know, play some roles that you do not expect them to play, for instance. And um, and they're, they're different because in your case they are I mean the I think the most distinct feature feature here is that slave is usually connected to one person because well he has a master, right? And in uh, Russian drama, for instance, sometimes 
uh, servants are actually connected to more people than uh, their uh, masters, so to speak. For instance, if you take uh, Revisor, I mean, Osip is connected to as many people as Hlistakov himself, because he is the one through whom they try to approach him. And that's interesting to compare, I mean, these differences. So yeah, I think it's a great idea to, to, to study. And, and of course, uh, the thing that, I mean, the quote by Aristotle that you mentioned, of course, calls for studying uh, the differences between men and women, but that, that's another yes, question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, more questions? Спасибо.